The holiday season is now here, and for consumers, that means getting an early start on shopping while keeping an eye out for the best deals. For retailers, it means hoping you have the hottest toys and the newest gadgets that will bring people in. As we dive into the madness of the Christmas shopping season, it's a perfect time to reflect back and remember some of the iconic toys from the years past. In this video, we will take a look back at the most popular toys for Christmas during the 1960s and 1970s. Etch-a-Sketch was originally known as Le Cron Magique, which translates to Magic Screen. It was invented by a French electrical technician named André Cassagne. Cassagne tried to get someone to produce his product for a year until Ohio Art Company came along and decided to spend $25,000 on the licensing rights. In the process, the toy was renamed. The company then began advertising the Etch-a-Sketch on television in some key times and it etched its way onto Santa's wish list all around the country by 1960. Many people today feel the slip and slide is very dangerous, but the origin was even worse. In 1960, an upholsterer named Robert D. Carrier came home to find his son and some of his son's friends sliding down the wet pavement in his driveway. Carrier then decided to create a plastic slide for kids and put it over hard surfaces for a slicker and safer experience. In 1961, this toy slid into Santa's wish list. The chatter telephone was created by Ernest Thornell after he spotted his daughter dragging their phone all over the house like a puppy. He came up with the idea to add wheels and then an assortment of noise-making buttons. This toy was originally made of wood, but today the model is made of plastic. The chatter telephone rang into the top of the Christmas list in 1962. 1963's Christmas list was heated up with the Easy Bake Oven. Time has proven that this was a brilliant idea, but in 1963, parents were concerned about the safety when it debuted. In order to address those worries, the toy company Kenner installed two 100-watt bulbs as a heating source to reduce the chance of burns. Barbie had been ruling the doll world since it was first marketed towards girls in 1959. Then Hasbro decided that they needed something for boys. So in 1964, G.I. Joe fought his way to the top of the Christmas list. The company decided to keep the word doll out of the G.I. Joe lexicon and instead chose the word action figure. Throughout the years, G.I. Joe has gone through many different changes with appearances and sizes, but his rugged toughness remains. The game of operation was invented in 1964 by John Spinello, who was a student at the University of Illinois. It was initially produced by Milton Bradley in 1965 and became the most wanted toy that Christmas. The object of the game was to test players' eye-hand coordination and fine motor skills while operating on a patient. One bad move and his nose would light up and buzz with pain. Today this toy is made by Hasbro and is still a big seller. Milton Bradley became one of the top board game manufacturers out there. But when it came to marketing Twister, they were a bit apprehensive. They were worried about the frisky undertones that could blemish the company's reputation. Despite having reservations, the company moved forward and Twister hit the shelves in 1965 to little fanfare. When Johnny Carson played this game on television with Eva Gabor, teens everywhere saw potential fun. The toy spun around in 1966 and landed at the top of the Christmas wish list. Lightbright is a relatively simple toy loaded with lots of fun. It starts with a backlit grid covered by a sheet of black paper. Colored pegs could then pierce the paper forming patterns and images that were lit brightly by the backlight. In 1967 these were a bright addition to kids Christmas lists. Later editions would include pre-patterned images of pop culture figures and cartoons. Hot Wheels rolled onto the top of the Christmas list in 1968. Mattel's co-founder, Elliot Handler, was still chasing his wife Ruth's success with Barbie. Elliot wanted to have that toy that every boy wanted. As a result, he came up with Hot Wheels, which was a more muscular American take on the die-cast English matchbox cars. 
The initial lineup offered 16 hot rods rife with color and metal. Lego is derived from two Danish words meaning play well. Those building blocks began in 1949 as a set of interlocking red and white blocks. By 1969, Legos had stacked their way up to the top of Santa's list. Lego building sets have remained popular throughout the years and you can never go wrong with these as a gift. This toy was made of non-expanding recreational foam which has been shortened to Nerf. It was marketed as the world's first indoor ball and it became an instant hit with Parker Brothers. The Nerf ball bounced its way onto the top of Manny Kid's Christmas list in 1970. Over 4 million units were sold in the first year alone. Eventually, the Nerf football would take the crown for the best-selling toy in Nerf's lineup. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. This was a catchphrase for Weebles, which was a must-have for young kids during the Christmas season of 1971. They were a family of egg-shaped plastic figurines that had bright colors and a kinetic, somewhat hypnotic movement. If you were a kid in the 70s, then there's a good chance that you had some of these. Merle Robbins was a barbershop owner and card game enthusiast that was convinced he could improve upon the game of Crazy Eights. He came up with the game of Uno, which was originally sold in his barbershop and other local businesses. In 1972, he played his cards right, and they were licensed to a funeral parlor owner in Illinois. That gentleman took it on to the national level and had remarkable success. This game was highly desired by kids and families in 1972. This game has remained popular ever since that time. Shrinky Dinks were released in 1973 and they were marketed as pure magic. They were thin sheets of plastic that shrunk down and hardened after being baked inside of an oven. The name was catchy and so was the fun. Christmas of 1973 had a little bit extra baking going on with these toys. In 1958, people began sidewalk surfing when they attached roller skate wheels to a board and then gave it a go. In the early 1970s, the creation of urethane wheels led to a smoother ride and this toy skated its way onto Manny Kid's Christmas list. Gary Ross Dahl was once having drinks with his friends when he thought up the idea of having rocks as pets. He believed that they would be the best pet because they required no effort. The idea was paired with clever marketing and lucky timing. This became a toy that was wanted by most kids in 1975. Doll made millions that Christmas and the fad soon died out. Some parents didn't buy into the idea of paying for rocks and then making them into toys. There is no stretching about Stretch Armstrong becoming the top toy at Christmas for 1976. You could pull, twist, throw, beat, and bend Armstrong, but you couldn't break him. He was made from a proprietary blend of plastic, rubber, and gel that would allow kids to stretch the figurine up to four times his normal size. In September of 1977, a version of the Atari 2600 was launched exclusively for Sears and it was called the Video Arcade Cartridge System. This game system became highly coveted during the Christmas season of 1977. It could be yours if you had $178.95 to throw around, which is about $720 in today's money. That was a whole lot of quarters in the arcade. 1977 saw the release of a new film called Star Wars. The movie became an instant hit and there was a huge demand for Star Wars toys in the Christmas season of 1977. However, Kenner had the exclusive rights to manufacture these toys and they were not prepared for the success of the film. They did sell an early bird certificate package which could be mailed to Kenner and redeemed for the first four figures. They were Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, and R2-D2. The box also contained a diorama display stand, some stickers, and a Star Wars fan club membership card. In 1978, there were figures and a number of other playsets that were offered. They became the hottest item for the Christmas season of 1978. 
Since that time, the franchise has remained popular, and over the years, there have been many different toys. Simon is an electronic game of short-term memory skill and was invented by Ralph Baer and Howard Morrison. The toy debuted in 1978 from the Milton Bradley Company for $24.95, which is about $105 in today's money. It became the top-selling toy of 1979, and if kids couldn't have one then, they wanted one for Christmas. No matter when you grew up, I'm sure there was always some toy that you wanted. Hopefully you were able to get it, and if not, maybe it made another appearance on your Christmas list the next year. For many people, the toys we had hold special memories. Maybe it was who gave it to us, or perhaps it was who enjoyed them with us. What was your favorite toy, and what are some of your memories with it? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.